Hey everyone, welcome to this new video in the course where we are converting Bruno Simon's portfolio project from Rejazz to React Tree Fiber. In this video, we're going to look into some unused files from the old portfolio project that we are going to remove, which also caused some issues for our ESLint and Prettier configuration. So we're going to fix that as well. And uh, after that, there will be a few ESLint errors that we're going to solve as well. So first of all, let's go to the uh, floor material where we worked on in the last video. And if you look closely, some of you might have noticed it already. Um, this file is not being formatted correctly. So if I save, formatting is not applied here. And this is because in our use lint and prettier ignore, we ignore the entire folio folder, even though we currently add our TypeScript files inside of that project. So what we want is we want to ignore all the JavaScript files inside of the folder, but not any others. So the TypeScript files and the TypeScript React files should be formatted by Prettier. And the same actually applies for the ESLint rules. So let's add it there as well. Now, as soon as you change this, you'll notice that um, there are going to be a lot of errors or warnings right here. So let's save that and see if that works. And it does kind of work, at least Prettier is doing its job. But we are still getting some warnings here. Um, even though we set up the configuration so that uh, ESLint and Prettier should be able to work together. And this is because of some uh, ESLint configuration that Bruno used in his own project. So he has his own ESLint file, which uh, has some specific rules set. So we're going to have to remove that. And once we remove that and we save this, you'll see that it formatted in a way that both ESLint and Prettier are both satisfied. Now, that is enough to fix our uh, Prettier and ESLint configuration. But actually, I would like to also remove all the other files that are unused, such as the resources, the bundler and the static files and the other configuration files right here. So select those and delete them. There we go. And then we are only left with the source file. So what we can do instead is select all the files inside of the source folder and move those to the folio folder instead. And that will leave us with an empty source folder. So we can remove that one. And that's actually all. Now we have a lot less code, a lot less files and a lot less folders. And we only have um, left what we are actually using. So this is Bruno's uh, project with our reactory fiber files in it and yeah slowly this will become more and more reactory fiber and less 3gs and as you might have seen in the terminal we do get a few errors now so let's fix those those are because of import issues now that we removed this source folder so let's fix that here as well and here and in the three elements file as well and there we go, the errors are gone. Now we have already created quite some TypeScript files inside of this folder. And uh, Prettier and ESLint have not run on all of those files, such as here. Uh, we have some issues now. So let's actually check that out by running npm run format and running npm run lint, which um, formatted all our code correctly now, all, at least all the TypeScript and TypeScript React files. And it uh, checked all the lint errors and tried to fix those which could be fixed. Now, the only errors that it found were some warnings uh, in this folio file. Now, we did actually intentionally add those any types right here because we don't have types available for those references. And because this code will slowly be replaced by reactory fiber code. Um, so what we could do is um, disable the ESLint errors right here for every line. But um, now that ESLint is complaining about this, I figured that maybe it would be a good opportunity to learn you uh, the correct way to do this. So to not spend too much time on this, I created all the types myself. Uh, so that we can just import those and add them here and that will be fixed. But let's first go over one case so that at least the process is clear. 
And for that case, let's use the config uh, reference. So what we want is to replace this with a config type. Now this is currently not available, so we're going to have to create that. Um, so let's add a types.ts file, which exports an interface called config. Now we have to import this right here. And we have to figure out the shape of this config uh, interface. Let's go to the set config file to figure out the exact shape. And as you can see here, it contains a debug, Cybertruck and a touch property. So let's copy those over. All of those properties will be booleans. As you can see here, this is a boolean and those as well. So now the interface is correct because those are the only properties that are set on the config reference, but it's still complaining. And that is because um, we are currently setting it to an empty object without the debug, cybertruck and touch properties uh, in that object. And uh, we can actually solve that by just moving those in there like this and remove the three lines. Now that's fixed, but we still get the error that uh, config.current can be undefined. And that is because our reference is uh, of type config, but we don't give it a default value. So by default, it will be um, undefined, which means that TypeScript automatically knows that it can be either un config or undefined. Now we are sure that it will not be undefined once we're going to use it because we are setting it inside of the use effect hook uh, right here on the beginning. So what we can do here is specify that it will always be set by using the null and then the non null assertion operator. Now our ESLint configuration doesn't like it when we use the non null assertion operator. Um, but we do want to use that in this case. Uh, I'm not a fan of this rule, so I'm going to disable it in our project. So if we go to the ESLint configuration, we can add a rule and let's there add the specific rule and turn it off. And there we go. Now the config is strongly typed and we don't get any errors about it anymore. Now, instead of showing for each of those references how I'm going to convert it, I'll actually copy over the types and uh, fast forward this change. I'm going to replace this types file with the actual interfaces right here and use those in our folio. Okay, so now we specified all the types for the references and I do want to mention that for the debug reference we use the .gui type because it directly uses that .gui panel um, as the reference so we didn't have to specify a type for that. But there are still a few compile errors though and that is because in some cases the types that I created are a bit more strict than um, what's part of the constructor. So, for example, in this sizes class, we construct an instance which contains a viewport and a size viewport property, while in our case, the uh, type for sizes also contains a width and height property inside of that viewport. Now, that's not part here. Here, it's just an empty object. But actually, in the resize function, which is also called in the constructor, it does set that width and height. So we are sure that those are set. So in those cases, we can actually cast it to the type specified in the reference. Let's also do that for the other cases. And there we go. There are no more compile errors. So let's one more time run npm run lint to see if there's anything left. And if everything's correct, then there should be nothing. And there we go. And that was actually everything for this video. It was quite a bit shorter than usual and it didn't contain any new features. So sorry for that. 
But in the next video, we are going to build on something quite cool. We are going to import um, custom 3D objects using React Tree Fiber and uh, handle everything correctly for that. We're going to build it in a generic way so that we can import, for example, the rocks, but we can also import the trees. Um, and inside of the React Tree Fiber component, we're also going to take the materials into account. So it will automatically pick the correct materials there as well. So hopefully you liked the video. Don't forget to like it if you did. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.